Welcome back, folks, to more Let's Play Space Quest. In the last episode, we died only twice, and we are now about to pull throttle. God damn it. Your door is ajar. Close door? Then pull throttle. Really? You gotta close the door by yourself? Anyway, never mind. The escape pod moves slowly, and we go. Congratulations, you just won a butt ton of points. You have narrowly escaped an explosive death. Don't start patting yourself on the back just yet, though. You are now traveling aimlessly through the cosmos. Indeed we are. But let's save, because there's a... Uh, let's see if we can get a funny death here. Look button. Oop. Look buttons. Ah. Press. Don't touch. I think we want to press that button. It said don't touch. I warned you. Oh! Ken, did you hear something? Well, those crocodiles there, we are definitely dead. It was probably just the Gator is entertaining another Space Quest player. Go back to sleep, Berta. Though a strange quirk of fate, or was it, you stumbled into a place beyond time, space, and dimension. You've entered the Daventry Zone. That's right, the land of King's Quest. This will not help you now since you are playing Space Quest. We are dead. There we go. So we had to go through we had to go through a blatant plug for another Sierra game, King's Quest. We are dead. But we will restore thyself and come back. All we actually need to do is just wait, I believe. So yeah. Let's let's just wait. The monitor flashes. You study it to see the new information is being displayed. Planet profile. Corona dimensions 3744.3 kilometer diameter atmosphere unbreathable and all that stuff the alternate system has locked onto a small planet of Corona and the pod has begun its approach nothing to do now but hang on well come on Roger you can do it you you crash the pod you idiot after a skull jarring landing you peer through the shattered viewing port out into the desert landscape a feeling of utter desolation settles in. You're in a fine mess now, Roger Wilco. Indeed we are. So, um... I believe there's a kit here. You not possess the designated item. Well, we'll take the kit then. Look, kit. This is a survival kit. It contains a Xenon army, army knife and a can of dehydrated water. Can we open the kit? No, no, we can't. Okay, never mind. Uh, unbuckle seatbelt. And leave pod. There we go. We are now out. Let's look at the pod, shall we? The pod seems to be semi-destroyed. A glimmering catches your eye. Upon closer inspection, you see a piece of highly reflective glass has broken out of the pod window. Let's take that bit of glass, shall we? The glass is now in our possession. Definitely not like a sheet of uh, like a sheet of iron from Space Quest Three, but never mind. So, welcome to Corona. The ground is yellow, the sky is pink, and it's all weird and weird. Let's move to a different area and see what's over here. Or not? You just become a vertical meal for the local welcoming committee. Oh, we're dead. Again. We just got killed. Never mind. I'm trying to remember what that worm's called. The giant blue worm. Oh, Grell. That's what it is. It's a Grell. And it'll kill you if you go to the left. Or if you go down. The Grell will kill you. So, yeah. That's pretty much saying, we can't be bothered to put anything over here. Uh, go right instead. So, let us go right. The Grell will not attack us if we're going right. Ah, there is stuff over here. We're now on 39 points. That's actually fairly good. We're nearly a fifth of the way through the game. Let's look around, shall we? You're in a desert cliff area. There is a natural land bridge in the distance. Indeed, maybe we'll be crossing that land bridge at some point. Oh, I believe we will. Let's save here, actually. There we go. Save game. Let's go over here. 
Oh, wait. That's a, this is Grell territory, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. Grell kills me again. That's a shame. All right. I believe there is a place, actually, we can go. So let's try and find that place. Aha! Let's save here. So what we have... Hello, Orat! How are you doing? What have we here? We have been turned into a basketball by Orat. Orat has transformed you into a new source of recreation. You, of course, don't survive this treatment. It's tough to make friends around here. Oh, Orat! You've killed us. That's a shame. But what we can do... Oop. You do not want to go in that. Throw water at Orat. Take this! Orat, always in the mood for a snack, snatches the cat out of the air with its with its spacious oral gravity, uh, cavity. Chews and swallows it. He notices a rumbling deep within his abdomen. Yep! You're dead, Orat! Orat's eyes prove to be bigger than his stomach for once. Incapable of becoming history's first living reservoir, his body succumbs to the intense internal pressure created by nearly 10 gallons of instantly reconstituted water. As a special bonus, you have received a much needed shower. Nice. Anyway, so with that out of the way, look. No, no, stop, Roger. Look. Floor. On the ground rests a gleaming chunk of Aurat's anatomy. Take chunk. You reach down and take the Aurat part in your hand. Some of it oozes to fill the space between your fingers. Lovely. Anyway, we will now move on. Now that we have defeated the Aurat with dehydrated water. Never mind. Now we will move on and go to that bridge bit. Because why not? Let us go to the bridge bit. Bridge bit. Let's go. Bridge. Yes, we'll keep walking up this. Oh, God. Suddenly, you see a large black metal sphere falling from the sky. A Sarian spider droid. Upon touching down the planet's surface, it sprouts legs and begins its search for you. You recall from an article in Space Piston magazine that the droid is designed to seek out organic life forms and self-destruct when contact is made. Oh, great. A spider droid. And he's here to kill us, obviously. But we can sort that out. Push rock and wait for him to turn up. Yes, there it is. It was not known that you are a master of the rock. That was a fine effort. And we have killed the spider droid with that. So let's save here because there is some silly stuff that needs to be going on. Like falling off. <laughs> You have travelled a long way only to die by carelessly stepping to your death. What a clod! Indeed. Let us say, let us restore our save file. And we will walk on this. I want to walk on this. Ha ha! You have travelled long to die, yep, by stepping to your death. That bridge will collapse. It does give you enough time to, if you, um... Go back to, the, if you uh, have to go back to the Aurat, because the Aurat bit is very useful to get what you want. But um, we don't need that, because we now have the Aurat piece. So we don't have to go back. Which is obviously really good. So we don't have to backtrack anymore. That is nice. However, there is death in the next area. And I'm sure that we will find most of them, if not all of them. God, Roger looks stupid. Dan, I fall into my death. Yeah, um, okay. Okay, uh, fine. Ah, here we go again. Right, so, make sure you don't bugger this up. Slowly making our way upwards. There we go, Roger. Now go right. And don't fall to your death. We should be right over here, I think. A little bit down. There we go. All right, now, what are we going to do up here? Well, this. We are now moving downwards to a new area. Look around, shall we? This is one end of an extreme, what appears to be a large cavern. 
The only way is to go left. There is a rock nearby. Ooh, well, we'll definitely take the rock, I believe. You need to be closer. The rock is here, I believe. Take rock. Done. We now have a rock. We are the master of rocks. Ah. It looks, look, this looks like death. So let's, 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 let's get killed. Death! Yeah! We are dead. You've been snatched from existence by a tentacled beast lurking beneath the grate. You feel the painful sting of digestive fluids. We are dead again, but we will restore ourselves. And not get killed. There we go. Go along the walls. Right. Look. Geyser. The there is a geyser cone here. It is rhythm rhythmically spewing hot steam. Put rock in geyser. And that sorts that out. Nice. But I'm sure we can die in other places. Like... Look... Pool? You gaze intently at the pu purplish pool of liquid. The first real sign of moisture on this planet. The pool seems to have no bottom. The gentle dripping of a soothing effect on your frazzled nerves. Let's drink the water. Does not compute. Damn it. Drink liquid then. Does not compute. Touch liquid? Oh, please tell me I can't. Oh, come on. Drink pool. No. Oh, I want to drink it. Touch. Pool? No. Never mind. Alright. Well, in the... Again, I'm going to go back to the VJ version. Um, in there, you actually... It's, it's actually acid. So, yeah, you do die. Also, this is a bloody annoying maze. Go through. Thank you, Roger. Where are you, Roger? Why are you still over there? God, how the hell did you get up there? God, that's annoying, that is... Oh, wait. No, no, that's not it. Oh, God. Not good. Not good. Alright. Screw it. I'm, I'm gonna drink from the pool. Because I want to die, because I'm annoyed. So let's just drink from... Uh, drink from pool. Say what? God damn it. Do it. Do it, Roger. I know you don't want to, but I want to see you die. There we go. You lean over to drink from the tempting pool of liquid. As your lips touch the fluid, you feel the pain which could be likened to kissing a lit rocket nozzle. Now you know what they say when they mean don't... What they mean when they say don't drink the water. And my head's gone. That sucks. That's right, you have no head. The darn pool must be filled with acid. You obviously can't go on living this way. And we are dead. Again. But we will restore. There we go. So, let's get moving, shall we? Go, Roger. You have got your head back. That's all that matters. So, if we go... Oh. Yeah, if we go this way, we should be alright, I think. There we go. That sound is horrible for a kickoff. You're in a large room in the cavern. There is a pathway above. At the south end of the room are two odd-looking units emitting beams of light. Ooh, this looks lovely. Maybe it's just like a search section or something. So like making sure you don't have any weapons on you. You know, see, I'm fine. I'm, I'm not fine. You're now lying on the floor in many pieces. Guess those beams weren't meant business, Roger Wilco. We are dead again, but we will sort that out, because... How do you sort this out? Well, you use the glass, obviously. Use glass. There we go. And... You've quite cleverly turned the beam on itself, frying it into inoperability. Indeed we have. Brilliant. Now let's save. We're nearly a third of the way through the game already, folks. Look at that, 62 out of 202. Now let's move upwards and carry on our quest. Our space quest. Eh? Eh? Ah, oh, forget it. Alright. Ah, oh, there's little drips there. 
Uh, I wonder what's gonna happen if we... It's probably just rain or something. A bit of liquid. I can't believe I actually got past that. <laughs> okay. Never mind. Uh, I, I still want to show the death off anyway. There you go. You're unpleasantly surprised by a drop of searing acid which bores its way to your feet. And we are dead. But we did actually make it through, which is good. We will carry on. And we will win. Go, Roger. We go into this cavern. Oh, God. A massive holographic image appears before you. You sense that you are the only life form in the area. So, Joe, you... Joe... Whatever. Uh, uh... Hello, do sad we? I can't stand you, mate. Sorry. I, I, I still can't understand you. Because of your inability to understand the lady alien's language, he has sent you back to the surface. Well, that sucks. That really sucks. Oh, hold on, hold on. God damn it. Did I really do that? No, no, no. What we're doing is we're restoring. Because I completely forgot to turn on the gadget. There we go. Now that we turn on the gadget, we should be able to understand him. That's what happens when you don't turn the gadget on. But how will you know that? I don't know. Anyway. Let's try again. That's better. So, you have found your way to my hallowed chamber. Fortunately, there is much more to you than meets the eye. You are very good at sweeping and sleeping. Anything that starts with S and ends in P, you're really good at. Stepping. You're probably alright at that, I guess. I've been monitoring your travels on our planet. You threw a bunch of water at an all rat and you pushed a rock down to the spider droid. And you got eaten by Grell multiple times. And you even drank the water. You, you shouldn't have did that. Anyway, it appears that you are up the proverbial estuary without a means of locomotion. Also known as, you're up shit creek without a paddle, Roger. I'm afraid. You're obviously in need of transportation. I, 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 I guess? It has come to my attention that you have met Orat. If you have proof of Orat's demise, drop it for my inspection. Drop Orat. Chunk. You drop the Aurac part to the ground. The vision is silent. You are startled by a rumbling. Suddenly, an oddly shaped door comes into view. It opens slowly. You hear a voice, different this time, beckoning you to step forward. Fine. We'll do that. Why not? Welcome here. Hello. Hello, you and all your friends. Please don't be alarmed. We intend no harm. We are a peaceful race. We are cautious, however. Others don't share our way of life. Welcome to Corona. You are standing in the power generation facility of our underground settlement. All power here is produced by steam. That is unimportant to you, however, as we have promised you transportation. This is a skimmer. It hovers approximately half a meter above the traveling surface. This is very important because of Grell. Grell and his like dwell in caves below the sand. If you stand on the surface too long, you chance becoming a rare moist meal for him. The skimmer is programmed to take you to a settlement on the other side of Corona called Yulant's Flats. You can make further travel arrangements there. I'm sorry that this is all we can offer. I hope your trip is a safe one. Board the skimmer when you are ready to depart. Good luck, strange one. Thank you, good sir. Uh, let's try. Let's turn off the gadget now, because I don't think we need it at the moment. There's no need for you to turn the gadget off. Okay, never mind. <clears throat> let's have a look at the screen, shall we? And let's see what happens. The screen's dark. Look room. 
This place is most interesting, indeed, a mixture of both old and new technologies. The one side of the chamber is a primitive steam generator, its pistons pounding rhythmically, turn, into, turn steam into powerful and useful energy. On the other side is what appears to be a computer console. Uh, look, console? The console consists of a monitor and a cartridge slot. There are also some readouts on the screen. Oh, blah, blah, blah. The readouts which indicate the status of some of the mechanisms in here. Uh, how about we use our cartridge, shall we? That is not currently one of your options. Put... Put cartridge. There you go. Whoever shall read this. Uh, we, anyway, we get like something like this. We can read the cartridge now. Whosoever shall read this, my name is Dr. Slash Vohol. Definitely Slash Vohol, even though his name is changed in the second chapter, but never mind. We'll, we'll gloss over that for the moment. I am a scientist with the Star Generator Project aboard the Star Lab Arcada. We've just successfully completed development and testing of the Star Generator. During this time, I have come to believe that our, process, our progress has been monitored by others. I fear the Sarians may have learned of our mission. In my fears, if my fears prove true, the Star Generator and the people of our universe are in serious jeopardy. The Star Generator is a miraculous device. Used as intended, it will help preserve life for eons to come. Used as a device for evil, it would cause the destruction of millions of lives and enslave all who oppose the Sarians. Encoded within this cartridge are all plans and specifications for the construction of the Star Generator. Should any disaster befall the Star Generator project, scientists would be able to create a duplicate for the Star Generator within this information. Please guard this with your life. Return it to the Xenon ruling body as quickly as possible. Important note, the Star Generator is capable of self-destruction. This, this was introduced to the system as a precaution. To activate it, one must enter this code. Let's remember that code, shall we? 6858. A five minute timer will begin to count down. Beware, anyone within five kilometers of the Star Generator will be in danger once the timer has been initiated. Please be careful and good luck. Uh, do we have to take the cartridge back? You wisely retrieve the cartridge from its slot. Yes, you do, and we get five points for that. Anyway, guys, I'm going for a break here as these guys go crazy waving their arms about. The Coronans. And in the next episode of Let's Play Space Quest, we will get on our skimmer, and we will go to Ulan's Flats. I'll see you then.